Hi, I am very really good evening. You have to unmute, unmute your microphone. Unmute. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Yeah, fine, sir. Good, sir. How are you, sir? <laughs> and uh, all of you, happy World Voice Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Same to you. All of you. <laughs> happy World Voice Day. <laughs>
Hi, Muhammad. Why are you, Muhammad? Hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, happy World Wide Day. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Thank sir, you. Sir, seventeen happy members have joined. Sir. You are waiting for the members. Yeah, yeah. Se seventeen members have joined, sir. Uh, just to wait for two more minutes and start. No sir. problem. Not it, 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 till you have two three minutes to seven. No problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean. Now you are uh, you are in Guntur, sir. Now today. Yeah, I'm good too. Yes, sir. We are very happy to have you, sir, on this day. No, no, no. I, I, really, I'm happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> because um, nowadays, uh, the bondage between the SLPs and the uh, ENTs or voice suggests, I think all this, is sir. like a milk and water. You cannot separate yes, them. Yes, sir. You cannot separate them. Yes, sir. You Milk know, and water somebody... and fish and water, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you cannot separate them. Yes, sir. So, so, so we have a long relation, but yes. only thing is uh, people must understand it properly. That is the thing. Only thing. That is the only difference. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So actually, this topic is very interesting, sir. <laughs> because uh, even even in the training period, either during your post graduation for our ENT people, or <clears throat> for you training as a cell piece, uh, it, you you cannot see all the nor all the cases. Not possible. Yes, sir. So, but when you come to practice, you will see you have to see many cases. Many persons will come, and and you must be in a position to deal all these problems perfectly, because in voice uh, in laryngology, uh, it is a a bind teamwork between the laryngologist and the uh, SLPs. Yes, sir. And that is all very important. Shall we start, sir, now? Yeah, as you like. Yes, sir. We'll start, sir. Slowly members will join and also we will share the recorded uh, video also, sir, link. And that, that's good. Yes, sir. Uh, that's good. Switching on the recording option also, sir, now. <laughs> Yeah. Good, good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to say happy World Voice Day to all our honorable members, Tasalpa and Yuka members. On this occasion, today we are celebrating World Voice Day by conducting this webinar. We have very good speakers. The legend, our Professor Dr. Panindra Kumar, sir, is there with us. He is the Senior Laryngologist and Phonosurgeon and Director of Melody Voice Clinic, Hyderabad, and also is having a uh, main branch in Guntur also, and he is the president of India Chapter of Voice Foundation. We welcome you, sir. And also we have another two more resource persons. One is Professor Dr. Rajendra Kumar Porika, sir. He is the senior audiologist and speech language pathologist from 
AYJ NHD Institute, Sikindrabad, and I also our respected Tassel Point UCO advisor. Welcome, sir. We have another speaker, Dr. K. Gangaraju, Senior Degrutologist and Medical SLP, Audiologist from Kim's Hospital, Sikindrabad. He is our Honorable Tassel Point EC members. We welcome all of you three to this webinar. Today, we are very happy to listen from you about the topic uh, neurological problems in voice and swallowing disorders. Thank you, sir. Now, I'm making you as host, sir, Panindar, sir, uh, Panindar Kumar, sir. You can share your slides. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir, you can share your slides. Are you getting uh, my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Visible? Yes, sir. Uh, just I want to check uh, once. Uh, yes, sir. We can see your uh, slides, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute. I want to change this. Uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> Just I want to see whether uh, getting audio in you this uh, computer audio. Can you tell me? Hello. Yes, sir. Audio is not in audible, audio? Sir. Huh? No, sir, we are not getting. You are not getting. Yeah. I think yeah, I try to change it, go back and uh, go to share screen. I think usually you find the option here, but I don't find the option. I am checking for that. <laughs> I will, I will go. I will again share screen. Yes, sir. I think I have to again share screen. <clears throat> uh, what was Where is the audio option in the share screen? Usually we find audio option. Oh, share sound. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got it. Now I think. Uh, now we are getting my screen. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can now see you see check. Your now just tell me whether I will play this and you are getting the. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Audio is audible, sir. Ah, audible now. Good. Good. Wonderful. Okay. Fine. Uh, uh, good evening, everybody, my dear friends. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, let, I want to thank you for inviting me and also give me an opportunity to join a great people from Tesalpa today on the day of the worldwide day celebrations. The talk, the talk is also very interesting. So. I just I want to share my knowledge regarding this particular topic. 
Is it clear, my voice? Hello? Clear, sir. Audible, sir. Very clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. So I wish everyone yes, of sir. you yes, happy yes. World Voice Day. Happy World Voice Day to every one of you. Thank you, sir. And now coming to the, the topic of today concerned, that is, we are dealing with the, the um, no, neurological problems involved in voice and swallowing disorders. And in voice, we call it a neurolaryngology, whereas for swallowing, we call them as neurodegulatology. So first, let us talk about this uh, neurolaryngological disorders. And we have here uh, that the most common is the paralytic dysphoria due to unilateral vocal cord paralysis. That is the most common disorder we come across uh, in the day-to-day -day practice in the neurological as a neurological disorder. Next common is spasmodic dysphoria. Sometimes we will come across uh, another neurological disorder we have to deal. The other things are vocal tremors and Parkinsonism. These are the common neurological problems regarding the voice where most often concerned we have to deal with them most commonly. So when it comes to a question of uh, uh, mean uh, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, in neurolingual disorders, the evaluation is very important. One is history. History, there is nothing like history. History of the patient is very, very important. That is very, very important. That gives a number of clues for us for the diagnosis and the treatment aspect also. Next, clinical examination. Clinical examination is done as a teamwork by the laryngologist, neurologist and SLPV. SLPV means last time I think you remember I told you the SLPs who practice who are practicing or were trained in voice therapy in Britain they are called as SLPV. So the people who are trained particularly in voice disorders SLPs they are called as SLPV. Then the other investigations we go for that commonly are X-rays, CT scan, and MRI in these neural neurolaryngological problems. Then we also do digital video laryngoscopy and uh, fiber optic dynamic endoscopy and computer voice analysis and all these things. We'll do it. I think the, this every one of you know very well about these things. I need not tell you because we already discussed all these things earlier in before also. Now, coming to the management of voice disorders, the mainstay of treatment is voice therapy. That the, the first line of treatment, all case, all these cases is voice therapy. All these cases, the mainstay of treatment is only voice therapy, most of the cases. And the next comes what is called the injection techniques or injection laryngoplasty sometimes. Then you have got the Botox therapy sometimes will give and then phonosurgery or thyroplasty. So these are the common treatment modalities, but voice therapy has got a lot of importance that every one of you Voice therapy is given as a soul, that is only voice therapy, or voice therapy may be given as an adjuvant therapy to the surgical interventions, that is preoperative voice therapy, and again followed by postoperative voice therapy. So there is no Void order which cannot which which can which can be corrected without the help of a voice therapist. So it is always a teamwork between the voice therapist and this video. So actually this video, so in case of for example, you take paralytic dysphonia, inulate local heart paralysis, the voice therapy is the first line of treatment. And uh, the of course, you, so therapists like you will uh, enlighten, enlighten later what are the various types of voice therapy we adopt all these things. That is uh, all in, in, in your domain. In, when the patient is not responding to voice therapy properly or 
if the patient is a professional voice user where he wants voice immediately uh, in case of vocal cord paralysis or thalamic dysphonia or when there is aspiration because of the paralysis so in those cases we go for injection laryngoplasty actually in injection laryngoplasty is done under local anesthesia and the injection laryngoplasty you can use either natural uh, material like a fat or you can use the synthetic material like hyaluronic acid Evenly, the fat is give, used to give all the surgeons under general anesthesia. Now, latest, I had designed a technique where fat can be harvested from the body of the patient under local anesthesia and injection also can be given under local anesthesia. So, I, just I would like to show you a short video clip here. Please see. Here, yeah, this lady. <laughs> See, this patient has got a vocal cord paralysis of just two months duration. So, first one month we gave her voice therapy. She is not responding. Then we decided we want to give injection and follow by voice therapy again. So, this is the before treatment. Every March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Ah, 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 You can find there is a lot of bobbing as vocal fold here, and also there is shortening of vocal fold, and this cord is not moving. I call it is awake ILLP. This is called injection lipolaryngoplasty ILLP. This is the technique I designed uh, first. Uh, the, uh, my own technique I designed for first time in the world, giving a injection under local anesthesia. The advantage is you know very well when we are doing injection, patient is conscious, so patient will respond to the injection immediately. Then we can know the result on the table itself. That is the advantage of doing under local anesthesia. There is injection laryngoplasty. <coughs> now you can see I am harvest in the fat from the buttocks. Some people they do from abdomen, but because it is local anesthesia, just very I give small injection on the buttock, like small, and then I after taking the fat from the buttocks, then I inject it through the neck into the vocal fold under the endoscopic control. So we are again here also giving local anesthesia. I can see here I have local anesthesia. And this is the picture of endoscope. So you can see the needle is entering here below the glottis and coming here. And this is going to, this is the cord that is not moving. So there is a glottic gap between these two car, these two. So I am going to inject the fat. So I inject the fat lateral to the vocal fold in the paraglottic space so that this cord will uh, come medially. See, as injecting your watch, I can you can watch here. The cord is just bulging; it will bulge like anything. Now you can see. Just watch, please. Here, yeah. you can watch here. The cord will you see. The cord is suddenly going slowly. It is increasing in size. You can observe. See now, yeah. You can see that the cord is uh, now the counter change. And this it becomes straight also. It is become straight also. So naturally the gap is closed between the two vocal cords. This gap is closed and patient is get, get the voice. So what do you do with therapy also? You use your compensation. So the normal cord will come attach the parallel cord and turn. So after this, what do I do? I use the laser uh, for this uh, fat uh, for coming, I mean uh, to be not be rejected. So I'm using laser and close the opening of injection with small laser fiber. And, and yeah, this is all done at local anesthesia. And you can watch the patient speaking on the table and patient comfortably. <laughs>
ಜನವರಿ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ಮೇ ಜೂನ್ ಜುಲೈ ಆಗಸ್ಟು ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ಅಕ್ಟೋಬರ್ ನವಂಬರ್ ಡಿಸೆಂಬರ್ So in case of parallel dysphonia, the idea is to go to close the gap, the parallel gap between two vocal cords, either by compensatory voice therapy techniques or by other methods like injection of laryngoplasty. Actually, this is a small clip also show you the thyroplasty how you do it. Uh, this is a post-thyroidectomy, auto-thyroidectomy. Uh, the patient has actually recurrent laryngeal laparosis because of the surgical trauma. You see the previous surgical scar here. And this also we are doing a local anesthesia here. So you can so I am injecting xylocaine here into the neck and then I will open the la- explore the larynx we open the neck here this laryngeal skeleton open here then this is also my own technique I designed what is called sandwich thyroplasty we can put this implant between the layers of the thyroid cartilage to mobilize to mobilize the vocal cord so this is called mediation thyroplasty so what I am doing is I make a cut in the thyroid lamina I lift up the thyroid lamina and then I will put the uh, implant and close the, uh, the, the, the the thyroid lamina so that the paralyzed cord will go and touch the uh, normal cord and the voice is restored for the patient see I am lifting this as a lid as a lid I lift it up as a door a hinged door and then Then I can put the implant here. You can see now I am going to put the implant here. Just under my edges. And I put this is the pericondrium of the lamina. I will put the implant here. And then I will close this one. Just you watch. See I am putting the implant. And then I close the lid and stitch it up. So this is very simple technique. This is also my own design technique. After doing this number of theraplasty for the last 20 years, 2 decades. I designed this technique and now it's very simple operation. Now everybody operating now with this, uh, this technique and this is called sandwich theraplasty. So, so what will happen with this also the cord will be medialized and patients can get back his voice. <coughs> <coughs> now, how it comes in neural laryngology? Why it is this? Whether it gives therapy or whether it gives <laughs> the other methods of treatment, whatever it is, the results are mostly encouraging. The results are very encouraging. Here, here I will show you some of the cases where I have done of surgical procedures. And this, the, this case is a... I am Vian Raj. So called paralysis. I have come from Montreal. Voice disorder since my childhood. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, His voice before surgery. Uh, today is 27th number 2005. I am V.N. Raju from Manchurial. During my childhood, my left vocal cord got paralyzed. I got it operated by Dr. V. Fanindra Kumar at Guntur. After the surgery, my voice is better 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 25th december 2005 this is long time done this is a case long done a long time before but even today the same technique we are doing and you can bus you please remember one thing This is not a, a magic or miracle. This is a combined effect of a laryngologist and speech language pathologist. So after surgery, the voice therapy has got such a tremendous importance because most of these patients, they will have a compensatory, what is called muscle tension dysphonia. In addition to the paralytic dysphonia, the, these people will have a compensatory dysphonia. muscle tension dysphonia. So, this muscle tension dysphonia, we had corrected them after surgery only by voice therapy. Then only the results will come like this. So,
So the other picture I'm going to show is the uh, uh, spasmodic dysphonia case uh, before Botox and after Botox. So now we'll see the patient before Botox. So in the last year we treated this patient actually. No, in the spasmodic dysphonia, you know there are three types. One is called adductor spasmodic dysphonia, and this is actually adductor spasmodic dysphonia. And you got abductor spasmodic dysphonia. That is a little rare condition and difficult to treat also. And the other one is called mixed. That is both abductor and adductor. But most commonly adductor spasmodic dysphonia. The management is mostly by Botox injections nowadays. And you have recently, but Botox you give only temporary result. It lasts only for five months and again we have to repeat the injection. Nowadays we have got surgical uh, techniques also where you can give a better results than the Botox. Now we are doing that. Uh, they are also under trial we are doing that. Next, this is the um, one you had seen before Botox injection. Now I will show you the same patient after Botox injection one month after the Botox. It will, the action will not come in immediately, but the action will come of Botox only after one month. See, just the patient. Sir, I have a pain. 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 I Numbers January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August, September, October, November, December. Uh, 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 you know, all of you know that Botox injection is given trans to the neck using a layer angel EMG. But please note here. I have not used any laryngeal EMG. I had, I had not given anything to the neck, but I have given through endoscope itself. This is also another technique which I am doing. First time in the country, nobody is adopting this technique. That is called transnasal endoscopic Botox injection. This is called transnasal, not to the neck or laryngeal EMG. This is another advantage of doing the injection. Now, let us go to the, the, the other interesting aspect is swallowing, that is what, that is called neurodeglutology. So, the neurom neurodeglutology applies to the study of swallowing related neurological problem of neurology. So, certain terminology very important, we know usually what is called dysphagia, means difficulty for swallowing. Odinophagia means painful swallowing. Laryngologist deals with the medical aspects of disorders related to voice, airway, and swallowing. Deglutologist or the SLP is concerned mostly with the rehabilitation of swallowing disorders. So, SLP role is more than a laryngologist here in all the swallowing disorders. The SLP role is very much more. So, it is and in rehabilitation is the mainstay of treatment by SLP is most of these swallowing disorders. Now, what are the causes or etiopathogenesis of neurodegulatory disorders? One is the, <coughs> the neurological problems. What are the causes? 
paralysis of the cranial nerves. So various types of cranial nerves, you know that very well. The fifth cranial nerve, that is the trisimeral, when it is involved, it may paralyze the buccinator muscle in the cheeks. So that will give a problem for doing chewing and a, a difficulty for swallowing other things. Similarly, when the facial nerve, in the case of facial paralysis, seventh nerve is involved, there will be a drooling of saliva and food and the lip, lip incompetence. The lip cannot um, um, close properly or move properly because of deviation. So that will produce again dysphagia. So this is what you are doing, what you are doing is what called called as oropharyngeal dysphagias. Next, other things are ninth nerve, that is the <coughs> glossopharyngeal. 10th <clears throat> nerve, 11th nerve, all these things may produce either velopharyngeal or laryngeal incompetence. <laughs> Finally, you got the 12th nerve, that is hypoglossal. <laughs> Sorry. The 12th nerve hypoglossal, which can give you dysfunction of the tongue. The other causes are brain injury or, or trauma or stroke, which, which produces following agnosias, brainstem stroke. Lateral medullary syndrome, Parkinson's disease or motor neuron diseases. <coughs> Coming to the clinical evaluation, evaluation of patients with uh, dysphagia or neurodysphagia are history very important. Clinical examination of neck for inspection, auscultation of neck and chest. Water swallowing test with pulse ox meter, instrumental evaluation, mostly what do you call functional endoscopic evaluation of swallowing or fees. And sorry, this is wrong, it's wrong, it's not fees, it is fees. And x ray variance of the esophagus and video fluoroscopy. Now, here I would like to show the TNE or transnasal esophagoscopy, the fees here, you can see. <coughs> No, the, now the transnational, the transnational esophagus I'm doing by passing this uh, uh, endoscope through the nasal cavity, the nasal <laughs> Patient has, has got the dialect spray here. At first, in the first step, what do we, we check? <laughs> See, you can see now I am checking the moment of the parrot. So this is what we have to do. Then we go down towards the larynx. Then you see the movements of the vocal folds here. The vocal folds are normally moving. But there is collection of saliva. There is pooling of saliva you can find here. Both myriform fossa and also postpacate. <laughs> See the pooling of saliva. So now I am now I'm trying to enter the esophagus through the piriform fossa. <laughs> See the piriform fossa here. <laughs> so I am slowly uh, asking the patient to uh, breathe. Uh, See, I have entered the esophagus here. <laughs> <laughs> I have entered the esophagus here, you can see. I am looking for the movements of the peristaltic wave of the esophagus. I am slowly going down. So I have reached up to the mid, mid thoracic. There is no stasis here. We don't find any food material, stasis, anything like that. So I can reach comfortably. So this is the esophagus I am reaching. So here you can look for any pathology in the esophagus 
either ulcerations or, or any discolorations or any thickening or any fungal pathology or any growth. All these things you can look for. If there is anything, any problem. But you can see here, you can find the pulsations of the iota. Once you reach there, because I have gone to the mid-thoracic region, you can find pulsating iota. If you see the iota pulsations, you can see here. Pulsations of the iota, you can see here. You can, you can watch very clearly, the pulsations are seen. So, see, so when I come back, I will retrieve, when I am coming back, then I will see the fleck of pharynx once again, and then come out of the esophagus. So, within the esophagus, I don't find any pathology, but at this time, what do you do? I give some food, something, something patient to eat, and look for again the any stagnation, anything, what the reason for that. Now, I am giving some, some small paste like semi solid food and ask the patient to swallow. Here, I have given him an ice cream, actually. You can see the ice cream has, he has swallowed, but there is a stagnation here, both in the postgraduate region and also in the piriform posa. He is not able to swallow perfectly. Immediately, he can not be cleared. So, this is stasis. And you can also find some spillover going towards the larynx, but there is no complete spillover. <clears throat> but there is delayed swallowing. The swallowing very much delayed here. That shows there is something wrong with this carcopharyngeal sphincter. So this indicates carcopharyngeal dysfunction. So you know as SLPs how to correct by therapy these carcopharyngeal dysfunctions. There are methods that is, various methods of therapy are available. I will discuss now that, that in detail you can tell but I tell only briefly regarding therapy aspects. So this is the how we can do the transnasal esophagoscopy or functional endoscopic evaluation of swallowing. The other investigation we do are the X-ray of the various swallowing esophagus, and then we got the other investigation, most calm, most important investigation is the video fluoroscopy. Just I would like to show how the video fluoroscopy help us because it is a a, a live demonstration can see much better the, as the barium passing through the uh, uh, so fact you can see that so he still he has got a stagnation here that is he is not able to swallow see at the splinter level it is stopped here so there is a problem with this cracopharyngeal splinter so this is about this uh, fees or uh, transparency esophagoscopy. Now this picture just show you uh, how a how a video fluoroscopy the swallowing will be. And the left side you got a young patient, this patient. The, and the, on the right side you got the old man. Actually, when you swallow, the swallowing time is only less than few seconds. Few seconds in case of young people. But in the case of old people, how oh, they struggle for swallowing, you can see from this video fluoroscope here. See, it has gone very fast. The food in the young, young man. See here, it's, it's, it's going very slowly. Very high swallowing, swallowing, swallowing. Yeah. So that is how the difference between a young person swallowing and a old people swallowing. <laughs> Management of neurodysphagia, all of you know, most important thing is counseling. That is very important. Next, next thing is swallowing therapy. Actually, swallowing therapy is the mainstay of management. In the, it may be either indirect or direct therapy. Next, we had some cases we do what, what called Botox injections by character with the spasm and all that. Surgeries are rarely, rarely done, like for the myotomy, actually endoscopic or external. And surgery is sometimes needed for prevention of aspirations like glottic closure, epiglottic overshoe, supraglottic lingoplasty, laryngeotric dysfunction, and laryngectomy, etc. But the surgical interventions are very rare. Most of the times, the mainstay of treatment in swallowing disorders is the, uh, is the swallowing therapy. So, thank you for your kind attention and thank you for giving the opportunity. Thank you,
thank you so much panindra kumar sir for the excellent uh, presentation on why sent swelling disorders sir, with uh, case studies and uh, pre and post uh, uh, surgery uh, videos sir thank you so much sir we learned a lot and uh, your subject is like a ocean sir how many ever times uh, we learn from you still there are so many things to be learned from you sir thank you sir thank you thank you very much Rajendra sir, shall we start sir with your presentation? Hey, then we go to uh, the other speaker talk. Yeah, yeah. Uh. If there are any questions, please ask. Yeah, please, welcome. I think there are no questions, sir. If any questions are there, we will email you, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mm. Shall we go ahead with the uh, next speaker, sir? Next, next speaker, please. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, Rajin, sir. Yeah. Dr. Naginder. Yeah. Now you are the host, sir. You can share the screen. Yeah. Uh, please. Uh... Make me host so that I can. Yeah, yeah, you're there, sir. The you're the host now. Yeah. Visible, right? My screen is visible? Ah, yes, sir. Now it is visible. So, so I hand over the session to Dr. Gangaraju. After that, my session will be there. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Gangaraju. I'm a uh, medical SLP and senior deglutologist and audiologist from Kim's Hospitals. So, uh, I'm very much thankful to Dr. Nayendra sir and team as well as Dr. Fanindra sir to invite me to talk about uh, uh, neurogenic voice and swallowing disorders. Neurogenic voice and swallowing disorder is a vast subject. There are various reasons, there are various neurological issues and the neurogenic motor disorder, uh, swallowing disorders are there. Initially, we will discuss about the neurogenic voice and swallowing disorders. So, uh, see, first of all, what is voice? Voice is a dynamic production. It is intended by the central nervous system with the help of respiratory forces and the vocal cord mobility. The voice, it will affect and it will act as a signature of an individual. Voice problems are the pitch, loudness and quality. Voice is highly influenced by the central nervous system. See, there are various type of neurological uh, voice disorders such as vocal cord paralysis and the bilateral vocal cord paralysis and laryngeal dystonia and dystonic voice tremor, essential voice tremors, and muscle tension dysphonia, neuropraxia, strider. See, usually we uh, SLPs, most of the SLPs, they'll see the all uh, vocal cord paralysis, such as like unilateral vocal paralysis. That is due to that uh, 
uh, laryngeal nerve paralysis, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis that is causing or another other uh, infection causes vocal cord paralysis. Widely, we, we used to see that vocal cord paralysis. But laryngeal dystonias and dystonic voice tremor, essential voice tremor, and muzzle tension, this, uh, these three disorders, little bit confused. Why? Because, sir, the symptoms, all symptoms are similarly same. But there is slightly vary from one to another. So, what is tremor? Tremor is a movement. It's a abnormal movement. It's a rhythmic movement. It's an abnormal, unwanted movement. Okay? A laryngeal uh, uh, dystonia. Dystonia is nothing but spasmodic dysphoria. Previously, used to call it's a dystonia. No, sorry, spasmodic dysphoria. But recently, 2022 onwards, uh, uh, Neurology Society of America, they changed spasmodic dysphonia to laryngeal dystonia. See, in laryngeal dystonia, there is sudden obstruction the airway or sudden jerky movement and sudden voice deterioration will be there. And dystonic voice the same, but the symptoms are little bit changed. In laryngeal dystonia, intermittent phonemes or specific voice stops will be there. In dystonic voice tremor, nearly rhythmic modulation. It's a, it's a rhythmic, but in this laryngeal dystonia, there is no rhythmic. In voice, essential voice tremors, you know that a rhythmic modulation in a pitch, loudness, there will, as in voice, essential tremors, there is no pitch changes, but there will be loudness changes with the voice tremors in muscle in muscle tension dysphonia continuous strain voice will be there so whether due to that uh, and any um, excessive tiredness or tension or neurological muscle spasm that that can affect the muscle related to voice and neck see Laryngeal dystonia, uh, spasmodic dysphonia, also known as, uh, we discussed about it. No? It's a lifelong condition. Usually, laryngeal dysphonia uh, therapies may not that much of effective. Why? Because of it's a uh, pure, central, uncontrolled movement. So, the th uh, therapies play a minimal role. Instead of therapies, Botox injection plays a major role in this condition and thyroplasty also it, uh, plays a major role in this condition. And uh, instead of voice therapy, the patient counseling may help. So that counseling helps to the how the nature of the disorder and the, uh, about their uh, voice symptoms. So that patient can understand their stress level may be reduced and they try to overcome that problem to change their communi uh, communication modality changes as well as their communication style changes and food and communication style changes. So compensatory strategy is most effective in this case. In muscle tension dysphonia, uh, dysphonia Usually, the muscle tense causes functional dysphonia or muscle tension dysphonia is the same. So, muscles is developed from uh, irritant uh, laryngitis or even stress among other conditions. Well, initial causes may be, may it, it's go away. It may, uh, may not go away in a short term or long term. See, neuropraxia. This is completely somewhat uh, new for us. Why? Because of in neuropraxia cases, uh, it's a, uh, in neuropraxia, it is causing nerve compression but due to that uh, any trauma or uh, prolonged intubations. These are the causes for neuropraxia. In neuropraxia, uh, it will affect the vocal cord, 
function it may affect the unilateral vocal cord paralysis also see essential voice tremor we still discuss about the voice tremors is a rhythmic it won't affect any functions of the vocal cord mobility but it will affect the movement of the vocal cord and shaky voice may be there in all essential voice tremor cases see strider strider is a dangerous condition why because of it will cause it will obstruct the airway if the prolonged obstruction airway that will causing patient may death how voice disorders affecting swallowing see the swallowing is mainly the central nervous system on peripheral nervous system induced function it is a movement disorder also swallowing is highly movement disorder and central induced function so central nervous system plays a major role that is bulbar system plays a major role in swallowing in that bulbar system contain 9 10 12 vagus uh, 10 now cranial nerves plays a major role so in that so in swallowing cough is a uh, cough is the main function cough is a main protective function to prevent the further aspir any aspiration cough is must so here as the cough is a protective reflex it serves as a normal physiological function it helps to clearing throat and upper respiratory tract secretions and bronchial tree secretions okay cough has the six components okay cough reflex has six component generally we used to see there, there are six three component mainly but here in neurological cases there are six components are there three are physiological and mechanical components and three are central central cough components see physiological and mechanical components of cough is a subglottic respiratory forces vocal cord movement supraglottic process see the due to that uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis impact the gag reflex quality then so that subglottic process and supraglottic process may affect in these cases see vocal tract or vocal cords are the gatekeepers for air and epit and foreign bodies prevention if the gatekeepers work not work properly somebody may enter into the, our home like so respiratory system is a home our vocal cords are gatekeepers this is the uh, three tier security system see first is uh, base of the tongue will first security system and second is epiglottic and third is the vocal cord these are the three security system it will those are prevent for foreign body entries and as well as secret involuntary uh, movement of the respiratory forces see here if it is if it is any abnormalities in these three security systems there is high chance of risk of aspiration why because of this following is movement disorder as well as it is moved by the pressures within the pressures unilateral vocal cord paralysis that can cause pressure variations in the, at the level of supraglottic that is aerodigestive tract 
so that will impact our bolus movement especially liquids central components of cough an efferent sensory limb and central processing centers and efferent limbs see here it is mainly about the muscle muscle tone which is pharynx nasopharynx and the oropharynx and laryngopharynx especially laryngopharynx this laryngopharynx if it is affected the muscle tone affected the ga gag reflection elicitation will affect for example an apparent system if if it is there any um, foreign body entered into the, our pharynx an apparent sy uh, system will inform lateral medullary area that which is responsible gag reflex and immediately that will be processed and that will inform the local areas that is pharynges and uh, abdominal muscles that will immediately it will elicit the cough so these are uh, the central fact central components which is mainly build the movement of the bolus how laryngeal movements affect the swallowing see we, uh, we uh, initially only we said that swallowing is highly movement disorder okay particularly uh, in the, those neurological cases the movement will impaired and the uh, process will vary due to the vocal cord as well as bulbar system in laryngeal hypokinesia or hyperkinesia or involuntary either it is voluntary related weakness or spasticity these movement disorders usually occur in the result of the pathological changes within the brain that is structural disturbances are in extra pyramidal systems imbalance in the or imbalance in neurotransmitter due to this the hypokinesia or hyperkinesia will occur especially uh, laryngeal dystonia or essential voice tremors or strider these are the movement disorders see in dystonia what will happen is in essential tremor the muscle or vocal cord will move in a rhythmic systematic involuntary function whereas it comes to laryngeal dystonia the movement will irregularly it's not a rhythmically it will twist and it may affect like this or sometimes it will twist the twisting like movement will happen okay that involuntary movement and uh, agonist and antagonistic movement are irregular movement that will occur in laryngeal dystonia and it's reduce the vocal cord movement and sometimes sudden stressing is also happening in vocal tract due to this food will spill into the most of the laryngeal dystonia cases and essential vocal tremors and the <coughs> vocal cords uh, induced to strider the, those those disorders will cause micro uh, prolonged micro aspiration especially liquids and semi solids see in due to that laryngeal dystonia or muscle abnormal muscle movement in the laryngeal system or either it is hypokinesia or hyperkinesia see in uh, hyperkinesia uh, hyperkinesia directly that put particle spills into the pulmonary tract okay in the hypokinesis condition the movement will 
occur in, in a slow manner. So, as we discussed about uh, swallowing, it's a movement, highly movement disorder, and the gravitational forces helps more in the food traveling. The when the movement will slow, the food's gravitational force will reduce. So, due to that, our esophageal movement also reduced. So during that time, the food particle may stuck into piriform fossa, varicoses, like that conditions will ha happen in that condition, hypokinesia situation. Conclude. The, uh, see, as we discussed about the movement disorders, the movement, movement is life for us as well as the movement of the laryngeal system and vocal cord palace is causing high amount of aspiration. So, immediate treatment of neurological voice disaster are essential for swallowing and prevent the further aspiration, which is causing lung infection and dehydration and serious illnesses. Thank you all and participants and organizers, Tasalpa and Yuka. Thank you, Dr. Gangaraju. It was an excellent presentation. Gangaraju, very good presentation. Congratulations. Gangaraju? Hello. Hello, Ganga? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Very good presentation. Uh, sir, sir. Wonderful. Sir, sir. Wonderful presentation. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Your voice is you, breaking. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sir, any question? Any question? Your voice is breaking, Dr. Ganga. Any signal problem? Is Your voice is breaking. Sir, sir. Yeah. Sir, sir. Any questions, sir? No. Sir, because time is not much. Sir? I think we have, I, I have taken more time, in fact. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much. Sir, Professor Dr. Rajinder, sir. Ah, yes, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Please, can you start your uh, presentation, sir, now? Doctor. Yes, are you able to hear? Yeah. Yes, sir. You can hear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good day, Namaha. Om Jai Ganapati. I congratulate every speech language pathologist, audiologist, and uh, I convey my wishes of World Voice Day. On this day, we are celebrating through these wonderful lectures from our Professor Dr. Parindra Kumar sir and uh, my friend Dr. Gangaraju. So this is me. So consecutively almost for four times we have done uh, from our uh, Asalpa and Yuka and we are proud of it. 
to generate awareness on World Voice Day program about, about the voice care and the treatment remedies available. So today, I have chosen this topic, paralysis. So we know the voice is very much important. It uh, reflects individuality and uh, from infant to geriatrics, everyone requires this voice. It uh, is main tool for communication and uh, both for professionals and non-professionals and everyone. Coming to the voice, normal voice has contains optimum pitch, adequate loudness and good quality and resonance. Then only one's voice is audible and it will be uh, understood intelligible by everyone the common voice disorders as we know the laryngitis and uh, like polyps nodules cysts and other on the vocal cords and vocal cord paralysis or weakness of voice and voice changes related to the brain and nervous system and spasmodic dysphonia we know the structural voice disorders such as ulcers cysts nodules and polyps and we know the functional disorders of voice such as muscle tension dysphonia and other things and we also know about the hypogenic voice disorders which are like hyperphonia and dysphonia and convulsion dysphonia coming to the neurogenic voice disorders as it already explained by dr gangaraju and uh, panindra kumar sir there are various types of neurogenic voice disorders Among that, vocal cord paralysis is one. The vocal cord paralysis. The vocal cord paralysis. I think you see. The we we have got unilateral vocal cord paralysis and bilateral vocal cord paralysis. Unilateral vocal cord. Unilateral vocal cord paralysis. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, sir, you. I think you have logged in in two systems, sir. One in mobile, one in a laptop. Just mute your mobile, sir. One we had to mute. Yes. Then echo won't come. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now are you now? Yes, sir. Vocal cord paralysis. As I said, it is two types. We know that unilateral vocal cord paralysis. is where when one vocal single vocal cord is paralyzed and uh, it is like it will have more uh, problem comparing to bilateral vocal cord paralysis when it comes to the voice so breathing problems does not usually happen when it is unilateral vocal cord paralysis and when it is bilateral vocal cord paralysis we know that it is very dangerous and uh, harmful comparing to the unilateral and uh, because it narrows the airways of voice and wind pipe and there is a trouble in breathing the signs and symptoms of vocal cord paralysis as we know that the breathy quality of voice hoarseness and noisy of breathing and shortness of breath loss of voice vocal pitch choking coughing while swallowing food or drinking or uh, like saliva is seen then the need to take frequent breaths while speaking they have lots of effort they have to keep and inst inability to speak loudly and loss loss of uh, gag reflex and ineffective coughing and frequent throat clearing these are few signs and symptoms and when it comes to the clinical uh, point of view we see that is, there is a hoarse voice dysphonia breathy voice rough voice and also diplophonia there is a two uh, types uh, means uh, two pitches are heard at the same time and uh, it's a unique uh, characteristics of uh, this and uh, the individual may have also have swallowing disorders problems when it when because of uh, the uh, obstruction in the trachea then coming to the causes there are various causes like injury to the vocal cord during surgery or uh, neck or chest injuries trauma may injure the nerves that serve the vocal cords or voice box itself and the uh, strokes Uh, inter, inter, uh, what called inter, interrupts blood flow in the brain and may damage the part of brain that sends messages to the voice box. Tumors, both cancerous and non-cancerous, can grow in 
are around the muscles and cartilages and uh, it will affect that way and the infections like herpes and other virus may can cause inflammation and neurological conditions such as parkinson's disease multiple sclerosis are few causes coming to the risk factors uh, which develop the upper carp paralysis such as undergoing throat or chest surgery so the surgeries may also have if something goes uh, wrong uh, it will always have a risk to uh, damage the vocal cords and sometimes the breathing tubes used in surgery are to help breathe if you uh, means having serious respiratory trouble can damage the vocal cord nerves as it was said me said by me and uh, having a uh, neurological conditions like people with certain neurological conditions such as parkinson's disease and uh, multiple sclerosis are more likely to develop vocal cord weakness or paralysis we know general evaluation starts from uh, uh case history and perceptual assessments like using scales and questionnaires and objective analysis uh, we know various objective analysis are there when it comes to the uh, voice evaluation and uh, laryngoscopic like direct and indirect laryngoscopic view and video laryngoscopy and video fluoroscopy these are the methods that are used to uh, visually and also to record the voice characteristics and paralysis and the dimensions and visual uh, view of uh, which kind of vocal cord which which vocal cord is more affected and what kind of problem it has uh, started so case history we know it will have a complete uh, detailed case history and it will give a total uh, what we call history behind the problem and cause uh, where it has initiated the problem and perceptual evaluation we know the grab a scale which is uh, used and uh, we we categorize based on the severity also and this is the simple method of perceptual evaluation which we follow like uh, we see the habitual pitch pitch range loudness quality resonance diplophonia pitch breaks and inflection and intelligibility so we can categorize their severity mild moderate severe in each category e each uh, uh, characteristics and parameters parameters of voice then subjective questionnaire evaluation such as voice handicap index and um, this one uh, here also we can uh, score and we can find out the severity of voice and voice handicap index again part 1 part 2 part 3 like uh, three parts are there like again we can uh, also find out how it is affecting their um, voice and their general and is how it is uh, obstructing them in general functioning also so objective analysis again it includes the mpd maximum phonation duration saza ratio fundamental pitch and uh, jitter shimmer values and other trimmer values etc signal to noise ratio also so nowadays we see lots of uh, uh, like um, not only diagnostic tools nowadays we see there is a, at a perceptual level though they are not standard like apps are there various apps are there where we can find out a uh, few values may not be calibrated but for qualitative one we can see then vocal cord paralysis management coming to this topic the voice therapy as it was said is it is a primary one and basic one one has to try the surgery few cases we are do means even the ent's generally they don't recommend surgery because if there is no a uh, cause like mass or other uh, uh, obstructions if it is not at major uh, major level they generally ask to go for the voice therapy uh, including their medical um, uh, drugs pre prescription etc as per uh, the applicability the other emerging treatment such as electrical stimulation through pacemakers which they use for the heart pacemaker such type of technology are going to come in future and it may be used but we are not uh, aware of this technique much so why we require voice therapy voice therapy sessions involves exercises as we know and uh, other activities to strengthen the vocal cords improve breathing during speech prevent tension in other muscles around the paralyzed vocal cords or cords generally what happens patient tends to use and do extra effort and use the other unparalyzed vocal cord at a strenuous level 
which is not uh, good at longer time so and uh, voice therapy also protects airways like uh, during swallowing and uh, by also breathing and occasionally voice therapy may be only treatment you need to follow uh, in the location does not require additional bulk or repositioning as i said earlier the voice therapy approaches such as counseling and realistic expectation you need to counsel the patient like what we uh, uh, generally do but we need to explain them diagrammatically or pictorially so at our video method using that so that they will realize what is happening inside so nowadays we use the uh, uh, what we call video recordings which they uh, get from the ents and uh, video fluoroscopy and etc where they can endoscopy these uh, this 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 gives them picture how their vocal cords and what happened exactly to them so with this we need to give realistic expectations we should not give something imagination that it will be cured or uh, it is a final method uh, of treatment so it takes generally it takes time and some cases there may it may be uh, developed means or they may get a recoup uh, the good voice in a shorter time but however even if it is uh, they are getting in a shorter time we need to continue uh, voice therapy ex exercises so voice therapy exercises includes basically oral exercises oral and head and neck exercises it is very much important because when it is paralyzed we are treating holistically we are not only treating that point where we use the head and neck exercise head turn uh, techniques towards the unparalyzed side and towards the uh, normal vocal cord side so that method and also we are using all the articulators and all the airway methods and all the laryngeal structure holistically that will help and the, it can be done through laryngeal massage laryngeal massage stimulates the whole part of the larynx and the its cartilages and uh, uh, the structures in that and breathing exercise is primarily very much important because the breathing as we know it is a power source and main source for the voice generation so they need to have longer breath so in that uh, uh, from that point of view we need to do lots of exercises like pranayama bastrika and few more exercises which are there we can do it and uh, we can improve their airways means uh, the vital capacity that vital capacity helps us to Uh, means help the person to speak for a longer time their maximum phonation duration will increase and by that the uh, extent of voice words number of words which they produce will be more then uh, it will help in that way so pulling pushing exercises which we use in other technique also here also it is very much important and inhalation phonation method is also uh, the technique which we use and uh, we take lots of air inside and we uh, start using that in a very uh, uh, what a conservative method so that is very much important and uh, so i want to present uh, the uh, one case which has got um, case with vocal cord paralysis who uh, who had uh, like very high pitch voice she is a female of about uh, 55 years age and got a uh, dysphonia with vocal cord paralysis unilateral vocal cord paralysis uh, with a soft voice and weak and also limited range of pitch and uh, overall her voice is affected which contains breathing uh, breathy voice which also contains a soft voice and overall it's a dysphonia so now let's see i want to present that uh, case to you so here you can see yeah it is opening now ah dekho na ram to sai ko the next time da next time the dinner time to the problem na on on so let us madam yeah. enti problem okay eppan chali okay 
దీనివల్ల ఏమేమి సమస్యలు ఉన్నాయి మీకు ఒక్కసారి మీరు ఇప్పుడు ఎవరితో వచ్చారు ఎక్కడ నుంచి వచ్చారు పిల్లల పేర్లు ఏంటి వస్తుంది సార్ ఆడియో ఈజ్ కమింగ్ సార్ ఓకే ఐ థింక్ దానిలో పోయి మళ్ళా ఇది చేయాలి ఆడియో మొదట్లోనే షేర్ స్క్రీన్ చేసినప్పుడు కంప్యూటర్ కంప్యూటర్ ఆడియో అని ఉంటుంది అది మనం సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకోవాలి మనం మాట్లాడి వినపడుతుంది అండి ఆ ప్రెసెంటేషన్ లో వచ్చే ఆడియో రావట్లేదు వస్తుంది సార్ ఒక లేడీ మాట్లాడుతుంది బట్ ఆ వాయిస్ వినపట్లేదే is breaking and we are not getting okay so uh, mira ka will change cheyali dana change cheyali meer share screen okay okay sir mali try cheyadam sir dilo raadu share screen mala cheyali meer share screen chesi aa computer audio select cheyandi sir we need we need first share screen close cheyandi again again share screen సార్ ఫస్ట్ క్లిక్ స్టాప్ షేరింగ్ అండ్ అగైన్ స్టార్ట్ షేరింగ్ అగైన్ అది ఆపిస్ మళ్ళీ చేయాలి క్లిక్ ఓకే క్లోజ్ ఏ మళ్ళీ ఓపెన్ చేస్తా సార్ హ్మ్ రాజేంద్ర మీ పవర్ పాయింట్ మళ్ళీ ఓపెన్ చేయండి పూర్ నెట్వర్క్ ఇష్యూస్ సార్ ఐ థింక్ 
Don't worry. Hi, yes, sir. Continue. Rajin, sir. Yes. So, sorry for the glitches. And so now this case where we can see means though it is not audible perfectly. And he excuse me. And he regret. And now these post therapy results such as like optimum voice moderate to the moderate level and above it has obtained. And uh, like, uh, and the pitch is quite fine, and it is also adequate. Coming to the, there is also a good inflection. Earlier it was monotonous. Now it was good inflection, and uh, intonation is maintained. And uh, the post evaluation says, uh, sh shows that it is a normal voice, which has acquired. And we, as I said before, we have used the oral exercises, laryngeal massage. Breathing exercises like Bastrika, Sudarshan Kriya, and uh, other exercise methods, and pulling, pushing, and inhalation phonation. So here, I I find these all techniques are very much important. And coming to the summary and conclusion, as we know, voice is a dynamic phenomena, which is both complex and sensitive. So one has to be more skilled, as well as uh, has to know the case exactly, and we need to uh, what we call plan the therapy based on the proper evaluation and assessment provisional diagnosis and the appropriate management and voice therapy techniques and strategies if you use properly there are chances that the cases would improve their voice very well and the evidence based practice is always important like and we have to maintain the record and report and video recordings if any pre and post so that the appreciation and as well as the uh, the treatment effectiveness can be known at large so fine this is me thank you now the session is open for discussion if any questions you can have. Uh, uh, sir one question you, sir. it was an excellent presentation yeah. professor uh, pacemaker uh, electrical simulation uh, i mean okay uh, is the, uh, in, did you mentioned that face maker simulation, electrical simulation? That was the no, uh, Can I talk regarding that? Uh, face maker electrical simulation, really? like that, yeah. uh, means electrical simulation for vocal cord movement. So, tell you. can we do that uh, transferential electrical simulation? Pass? No, no. Transferential electrical simulation. Can you see? Can you talk? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this pacemaker is still under experimental. And pacemaker. So, also, uh, how, uh, is there any chances to excessive vagal nerve stimulation that causes heart, heart, uh, heart problems like that? Is no, it safe no. method to? Okay. This pacemaker stimulation is mostly applied in case of bilateral vocal cord paralysis. Bilateral. Hello. Can, are you hearing? Sir. No, sir. Can you uh, can you repeat it again? Okay. Am I clear now? Ah, yes, can sir. You hear, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This pacemaker. Uh. He is applied mostly for 
bilateral vocal cord paralysis okay bilateral bile not for unilateral okay bilateral only yeah its application is mostly for bilateral is there and, any evidence sir yes there is evidence and it okay. is it is still under experimental not okay. very often practiced not oftenly practiced throughout the and, world and mostly the other procedures going nowadays yes, are re yes, reinnervation surgeries reinnervation we are doing what is called reinnervation surgeries reinnervation okay uh, okay there are two it, types in this the one is called selective reinnervation is it palmer's reinnervation yeah there are two types one is yes, called sir. selective reinnervation and non selective reinnervation but the yeah. problem is reinnervation in lacrimal laryngeal nerve there may be mm. a, a, some problem with synkinesis because it contains both adductors and abductor fibers yes sir so so when you when you write that nerve endings again there may be problem with synkinesis so nowadays that's why they are doing what is called non specific non selective reinnervation <clears throat> sir sir uh, if we do the uh, lar uh, laryngeal electrical stimulation the, the, is there any chance to excessive stimulation of vagal nerve that which is causing no, 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 heart no. problems like that huh? no 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 that is it what is called no it is called selective reinnervation that means only that nerve is stimulated Okay. Not the not That's the right. entire vagus nerve. Yeah, which means they have not the entire vagus nerve. Only that nerve will be stimulated. Only that nerve. Okay, stimulation. Yeah, only the specific nerve will be stimulated. Not the entire nerve. Not the vagus. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, uh, Dr. Nagendra, Rajendra Pumar, excellent presentation, uh, very good, Enlight you are enlightened very much, Dr. Rajendra. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. sir. Yes, sir. I am not hearing from you. Yeah. I think. Yes, yes, I am able to hear. Yeah, you got very good presentation. So, Dr. Nagendra, what I suggest is. if you have a meeting once in a month for clinical cases presentation that is much sir. better learning technique yes sir because that is the one who will start because it is not applied anywhere in india still now with slps yes sir a clinical case discussion okay sir once in a month i i want an opinion of all of you how it looks like so But this is this is not. Uh, you have to keep the patient in before you, and we'll discuss. Yes, sir. So, I think uh, to, today also we have tried, sir. Actually, uh, our Rajendra Kumar sir and uh, Ganga Raju, Dr. Ganga Raju are there in a patient's house now, <laughs> live. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that, I have asked I them to the, show no, the. No, no. no, I think actually this is not the time. Yes, sir. To talk with the patients. Gee, the patient should be in your clinic, not in the house. Clinic. Yes, sir. A patient should be in your clinic, and that that patient should be informed before, and he should be informed that you are going to discuss your case with other specialists like this. That is good for you. Yes, sir. So that patient is benefited, and we are all benefited. Yes, sir. It is always a discussion, a teamwork, really uh, the way to success. Yes, sir. That we should remember. It is way to success. A teamwork is always way to success. And uh, of course, uh, every part of it has got its own importance. Yes, sir. Gangarazu, your lecture was good. <laughs> thank you sir thank you so much sir actually in uh, swallowing disorders sir and voice and swallowing disorders uh, there is a minimal data available 
so due to that uh, we couldn't uh, 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 so just i mentioned the only particularly neurological voice disorder it, uh, it is causing aspiration only i am not mm-hmm. attempted any diagnostic methodology as well as uh, therapeutic methodology don't so usually we used to see that uh, bedside swallowing evaluation and uh, uh, after that if it is any suspect and uh, uh, aspiration suspect and then we go for uh, phase or translaryngeal uh, videoscopy and uh, after that we'll go if it is a still if it is any doubt will be there then we go for uh, modified baryon swallow studies sir so based on that we will pl- we will plan the therapeutics sir okay good actually uh, the swallowing is a upcoming specialty and nobody is yes. master in this nobody Because yes sir we are actually learning everybody we yes. are learning now that yes sir throughout, throughout the world it is a upcoming specialty and in the voice we is there 50 years in other countries but we are late in india to develop voice when i started the voice surgery in 20 years before the my, my first operation thyroplasty was 1995 ba i operated maybe <laughs> you are small kids at that time maybe i don't know yes sir, yes, sir. <laughs> so i operated the first sir, case uh, one request we will have a group photo uh, because uh, we are seeing the pe- people are leaving the uh, presentation so we will have a group photo on the world voice day so that it will be a memory for the next year is it possible oh like this yeah yeah everyone yes, should uh, our doctor most there. active life member nms redigar is there sir <laughs> Okay, I, all I, of I, you I, please uh, put your no. videos on. Yeah, I, so I that love we can it. take a I, I, photo. I I like it and love it. Uh, please yes, join sir. all of you. Senior member Dr. Murchinjay sir is also there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him. Murchinjay sir there. MS Reddy yes, is there. Yeah, we find MS Reddy. And all the people. Dr. Murchinjay, every everyone please uh, switch on your webcam, camera. Short videos, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, like that. I put one uh, uh, banner, like a uh, worldwide banner. Also, you include here. Yes, sir. If we share the banner, it won't come. Yeah. Sir. NMS ready is looking very fair. <laughs> 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 Maybe the effect of foreign tour. <laughs> <laughs> a cute boy, sir. Anmir ready is also looking very cool. and he is demonstrating that he is a ent specialist atla em le sir ni enaga mottham good 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 fernando good iphone krishna yeah okay so, sir one minute i will also take from system uh, i will also take from system please be patient for one minute okay, okay. it will be done <clears throat> okay you, uh, actually i got see my screen i made it that also the world wide day i'm able to do it sir sir uh, i actually I, we should appreciate dr gangaraj sir he has uh, taken two days effort and ah. he was there with me and uh, we, we both combinedly did his presentation next time we will come with more uh, lucid and uh, very good uh, presentation in yeah, future yeah, with yeah. your blessing Hmm. I am okay. No, no. Yes, I am very chapter like that. Yeah, yeah. He was showing so much of interest, and sir, he sir. created here. Oh, no, 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 no. They're very much, they're very much good, and this, this is a good prognosis for the future generation. That what yes. I believe, yes. you know, that I always believe there is a future generation going to be good to sign. That what I'm thinking. Yeah, that will must be very good. I think you are doing very good job. excellent yes. job we were doing yeah excellent job we were doing sir i pen na rkp sir one minute please all of you please uh, be on screen. i would like to extend Sweet my time. wishes sir uh, and very much thank you to uh, dr rkp sir and uh, dr nayendra sir and dr panindra sir to enlighten me and uh, encouraged me regarding the swallowing voice and swallowing disorders so if you are not there i am not here sir thank you so thank much you for sir. your blessings thank you for your blessings dr gangaraju congratulations once again 
and I, I, I appreciate very much your enthusiasm in the learning and teaching also. It's very good. Yes. I appreciate very much. Very much. Hello? Ah, oh, sir. Educating the... You are... Hello? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, fine. So, anything else we want to tell? Sir, so done, sir. Just... Photograph done, sir. Group photo? Uh, yeah. I think photo done. Rajendra, sir. Vice mute loan me. You can do like that. Uh, one minute. Mm. I, we can also take from your cell phone. Yes, sir. It's, it's done, sir. You can also print the screen and get a photo also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is also possible. Both the things are possible. Uh, actually, yes, all our photos are going to Vice Foundation, my friends. You, you will be displayed in America. Oh. <laughs> wow. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Foundation. And uh, all of you will be there. It will be displayed there. Thank you, sir. Yes. That, will, that is very thing. That is very calm. I am getting some more, one more photo I am taking. I am taking one more photo, actually. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yes, Gaga, no, KV also joined uh, from, from space. Nayanadu, uh, Nayanadu, you have taken a lot of pains to do this. I appreciate. Thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Definitely, thank sir. We, as you suggested, every month we will try to continue this type kind of webinars with case studies, sir. Yeah, it is better to continue this because teaching is a continuous and learning is a continuous process in life. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time and uh, always um, yeah, guiding us, sir. Very, very, very important. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. I wish you all okay. very happy Sira Nomi, sir, in advance. Yeah, I wish you all of you also. Same thing. Same thing. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you all happy Sira Nomi. Happy World Day. Happy World Day. Happy World Day. Thank you, Rajendra. Thank you. Happy Sira Nomi, sir. Happy World Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. meeting, sir? Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah.